3D printing has changed for good and bad, sort of. What exactly has changed? I can answer that with one simple word, bamboo. While I'm going to mention a few things that are specific to bamboo printers, most of this information is going to be pretty relevant to most newer 3D printers. Well, before we get into some really deep stuff, I wanted to give you some basic information to get you started. First up, when you get your print going, most printers are going to print a line, either to the side or on the front of your build plate. Now this is called a purge line, and the intention is to get the filament flowing before it tries to create your print. If it didn't do this, well, there's a chance that your first line on the print may not get printed, and then there's nothing to build on with the next layer. Along with the purge line on multicolor printers, like the ones from Bamboo, when you're printing in color, you're going to have a square or a rectangular box that gets printed on the back of your build plate. Now this is called a purge tower. Once you're done printing, you'll notice this purge tower probably has the same color layers as your print. And just like the purge line, it's intentional and necessary for swapping out colors and getting that filament flowing. Where the filament comes out and touches the build plate, that's your nozzle. And just above that's the hot end, or it may be called the heat block. There should be a silicon cover of some color that goes over this area. It's called a silicon sock, and that's there to help your nozzle have consistent temps and not overheat. If the sock's missing or it's badly damaged, well, you could have some very inconsistent temps that will cause your filament to extrude in very bad ways. Or it could even stop extruding, getting the infamous clog, and nobody wants that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And one last thing in this section, I'm going to talk about a number of different printers, and you've probably already heard terms like Core XY and Bed Slinger. In simple terms, a Core XY 3D printer is one where the bed goes up and down. That's the Z axis. So the core of the machine is the X and the Y. That has the head of the machine. And it's the only part that really moves back and forth. You'll see this on machines like the Creality K1s, then the Bamboo X and P1 series printers. In contrast, a bed slinger is exactly what it sounds like. The head of the machine moves left and right on the X and also goes up and down on the Z but the bed itself slings back and forth on the Y axis. The Bamboo A1s, the longer LKs, the Enders, all of those are bed slingers. After all of that, the next thing you should really know about is calibration. And most 3D printers that have come out in the past few years have all sorts of tests built in. Those tests are absolutely crucial to getting your printer ready to print. If you skip them, you're just setting yourself up for some failure and frustration. You're going to want to run a full calibration on your printer every so often or whenever you feel like something's going really wrong. I have a Bamboo P1S, A1, and A1 Mini, as well as Creality K1s, and those have those calibrations. I try to run them about once a month or so, but even more if I move one of them or something's not printing right. Now, most calibrations will pretty much set everything up you need, so you usually don't have to worry about e-steps and things that you might hear. The printer tries to do as much as possible, so you don't have to. And you may have heard about bed leveling and the nightmares of leveling with a piece of paper and turning knobs. <laughs> okay, not something I'll really want to go back to. <laughs> most printers now have built-in ABL, or automatic bed leveling. You probably have the option to do a short version of this every time you print, and it's probably a good thing to let it go ahead and do. You'll know your printer's leveling when the nozzle goes around the bed, touches different points a few times before it moves on. Running a full ABL calibration is usually part of the full calibration test that you run, but you can usually do a full one if you have some issues. And this is a good first thing to do if you're having consistent problems with a print. Well, after you clean your build plate really well. Next up is filament settings. Orca Slicer, Bamboo Studio, Creality Slicer, and even others, they've tried to make things as easy as possible for you. In general, you won't need to make a whole lot of changes to your filament settings, especially as a beginner. In most cases, you should be able to set the profile to a specific brand filament, if it's available, or you'll have some sort of generic brand listing. Now these settings that you're going to choose, they're going to have some of the most general settings available for that brand, or just generic in general, and that hopefully will give you a great print. 
Now, note that I said general settings. These can always be changed, but for beginners and even a lot of pros, you'll most likely find these settings work just great for most prints. These filament profile settings have a range of temperatures that work for your filament. And if you have a bamboo in particular, your printer is supposed to constantly check different settings to provide the best extrusion for the best print. And depending on your print speed and complexity of the print, you may find some of those settings do need to be changed. But that can come later when you're more comfortable with your printer and how these settings work. Then you can make some changes based on things you've learned and researched. Now, if you do seem to have issues that seem to be filament related, one of the first things you can do is swap to a different filament and see what happens. Different brands do different things and try a different profile. Also, you've probably heard at least a little bit about one of the biggest 3D printing debates and that's regarding filament moisture. The biggest problem with this debate is the most vocal critics and advocates, they don't seem to care or understand that people live in different humidity areas around the entire world. It can be a problem for some and not so much for others. Hello there. The thing to remember is that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and your filament extrudes somewhere around 200 degrees Celsius or more. So if you hear popping sounds as you extrude your filament or it's brittle and snaps easily, well, that's when you know you probably have an issue. If you're having problems with your print sliding around your bill plate instead of sticking in place, this isn't hockey. Hockey? This is something called an adhesion issue. <laughs> there are a couple of things you can do to get this fixed, and the first thing you should probably do is something you should get into the habit of doing probably before every print. Clean your build plate. There's quite a few ways to clean your build plate, and unfortunately there's as much debate over this as filament moisture, but the quickest and easiest option, just use some water and wipe it down with a microfiber towel. Make sure to dry it good before you print. Now another option is to use a little of a degreasing dishwashing soap and hot water to get off any stubborn spots or just to be extra positive the plate's clean. Now if you're still having problems with adhesion for a specific print, maybe time to look at glue. Not just any glue though. Make sure you're using a washable glue stick and usually it's going to be purple. And if it's not washable, well, you may end up buying a new build plate. There are other adhesion possibilities out there, and some of them cost a good deal more, but I leave that to you to try out. I've heard that good old Aquanet hairspray works great just as well, if you can find any. So I know a lot of you probably already knew most of what I talked about today. That's fine. It's never a bad thing to get a reminder about all those little things that we take for granted, especially as we try to help out others who are feeling a little lost. So let's be kind online, let's help each other out, and let's have a lot of fun with 3D printing as we all continue to learn, create, and amaze. And now I need to figure out how I got into these woods. Sweat.